The first thing we want to be aware of when we see a problem based on a graph is to make sure we understand what the horizontal and vertical axes are. And in this case, we've got velocity versus time. What does that mean? Well, that means that any question about acceleration is really a question about the slope on this graph. Questions about velocity are questions about the height of this graph. And questions about position are about the change in signed area on this graph. With that orientation, we're in pretty good shape to be able to address some of these questions. I also want to put up here some useful formulas that we need to keep in mind when we're doing these geometric based calculus problems. So let's go ahead and get started. In uh, A, they just ask for when the squirrel changes direction. And that is as simple uh, as remembering that just the phrase changes direction is the same as asking when the velocity changes sign. So I'll just write that out. Okay, and it's easy now that we have our bearings to know that the velocity changes sign here at t equals 9 from positive to negative, and here at t equals 15 from negative to positive. So we just say it's when t equals 9 and t equals 15. And that's all there is to that. All right, part B is asking us about the farthest distance from the building. We begin by asking ourselves at time t equals zero, where are we with respect to the building? And they tell us in the text that we are right at the building, meaning our distance is zero. So what other places could we be farthest from the building? Well, from t equals 0 to t equals 9, we have a positive velocity. That means we're moving to the right. Since we keep on moving to the right over this entire interval, the time when we possibly could be farthest from the building is right here at t equals 9. Then we start moving to the left, as indicated by the negative velocity. If we move to the left far enough, and even though it doesn't look like this geometrically in this case, we have to cover all the possibilities. If we move to the left far enough, then we get back to the building and then we get to the left of the building. So it's possible that our distance at, at the end of our moving to the left could be the farthest from the building, just leftwards. Then from 15 on, we're moving right again. It's possible that the distance that gets added to the right overcomes whatever distance we were to the left and adds enough additional that this is the farthest point. And all of this is just to say that we need to check at time t equals 0, at time t equals 9, at time t equals 15, and at time t equals 18. Those are the possible places where we can be farthest from the building. Let's make a table of our change in position. and then our distance from the building. So there is no change in position right at the beginning. Our distance from the building is 0 at t equals 0 because they tell us that in the problem. Now, what's the area of this trapezoid? Well, we use the area formula. We find two parallel sides. We take their average and we multiply by the distance between them. So here we have two parallel sides. The top side is of length 5, the bottom side of length 14. I say, I'm sorry, not of length 14, but rather of length 9. 
it's 5 plus 9, that's 14. So we take the average of those two parallel sides and we multiply by the distance between them. So that's going to give us 140. We add that to the distance that we were at the beginning of that trapezoid and we get 140 for our distance. Next, we have to add the signed area from 9 to 15. Again, we'll use the area of the trapezoid the average of the two parallel sides, that's going to be 6 plus 4. Times the distance between them, that'll be 10. Or, in the case of signed distance, negative 10. And so, we get negative 50. When we add that to 140, we get 90. And then lastly, the area of this trapezoid, the average of the two parallel sides, this is 2 and this is 3. Times the distance between it. And that's a positive 10. Again, that was a negative 10 up there. And so this is 25. Add that to the 90, and we are 115 away. Now we're in a position to answer the question. When are we farthest from the building? We are farthest from the building at t equals 9, and our distance is 140. Let's go on to part C. That asks us the total distance traveled. Well, it's important that we remember the definition of total distance traveled and that is the sum of the absolute values of the signed area total distance traveled is the sum of the absolute value of the areas and that is going to be equal to Let's just put those areas in. We figured this was 140, this was negative 50, this was 25. It's going to be 140 absolute value plus negative 50 absolute value plus 25 absolute value. And so the total distance traveled is going to come out to 150. Uh, it's going to be 215. And so the total distance traveled is 140 plus 50, 190 plus 25, 215. So now we come to part D, and D is a little more subtle. We have to be careful here, particularly with our minus signs. So I've drawn a figure ahead of time. We're focused in on this area, the interval from t equals 7 to t equals 10. And we're going to begin by finding the acceleration as a function of time. Well, the acceleration as a function of time on a velocity versus time diagram is the slope. So we'll use the slope formula remembering that the y here represents whatever is the vertical axis and the x here represents whatever is the variable measured on the horizontal axis. So in our case we're talking about v for the vertical axis and t for the horizontal axis and we'll just compare the point at 7 to the point at 10 and so all we're really saying is that the acceleration is v of 10 minus v of 7 divided by 10 minus 7. I'm going to write that out. v of 10 we have as negative 10. v of 7 we have as 20 negative 10 minus 
20 is negative 30. And so we have negative 30 over 3, which is negative 10. So in conclusion, we're going to say that a of t equals negative 10. It's a constant. Next up is v of t. All right, velocity is simply the height. Therefore, we're going to use the point-slope formula around the most convenient point. Now, the most convenient point here is going to be where the height is zero. And so, we're going to write that v, the variable, minus v of 9 equals the slope negative 10 times t minus 9. And what is v of 9? Well, the good news is v of 9 is 0. Again, I could have picked any point along this line, but picking the point where the height is 0 simplifies my algebra. And so we have v of t equals negative 10 times t minus 9, which we can write out, if we wish, as negative 10t plus 90. All right, lastly, we need to find x of t. x of t, we're going to work about the simplest point, work about x equals x of 9, x when time is 9, and then we'll add the signed area, working out from t equals 9. So we know that when t equals 9, we know what the position is. We've calculated it previously. It's 140. And now it just falls to write out the signed area. Again, when we think about the signed area, we're talking about working out from this point here at t equals 9. And so whether we're working up or down, we're going to get a triangle. And we will be adding in the signed area of that triangle. So all we have to do is be precise about that signed area. Well, the signed area is going to be 1 half. The base, we want the signed distance. And that is going to be t minus 9. And then we want the signed height. And the signed height is going to be our vertical position along this line. But we already have a formula for that. It's negative 10 times t minus 9. So putting all of this together, algebraically, we can say that x of t equals 140. I'm going to take this negative 10 and this half and turn it into a negative 5. So it's 140 minus 5 times t minus 9 times t minus 9. So we have x of t. Again, we could leave it in this form and still get full credit, but just to make sure we make it easy for the graders. We'll write it like this, minus 5 times t squared minus 18t plus 81. And that is going to give us 140 minus 5t squared plus 90t minus 405 
And finally, if we want to combine all the terms, we'll get negative 5t squared plus 90t minus 265. What I think is interesting about this problem is that it can be done purely geometrically. Namely, there's no need to make recourse to anything about derivatives and integrals. We can just work with the slope and the signed area. And so this problem can be done very early on in the student's progression in understanding calculus.